and we are meeting Day Pilkey, Pilkey. the author of Captain Underpants and, and Dog, Dog Man. Man. Hello, oh, baby. I'm ready. Let's get in the car. Keep watching to see what happens. Oh, and by the way, speaking of those books, we are doing a summer reading challenge. So stay tuned for that video. <laughs> okay, and I was also, I was also uh, diagnosed with dys dyslexia, which is a reading challenge. And I think the worst problem that I had was that I had a teacher who was not very nice to me. And she used to make fun of me because I couldn't read as well as everyone else and she would take my drawings away from me and she would rip them up right in front of everyone and she was always getting so mad at me and I never did anything, seriously. I, like one time, all I did was I went up to her desk and I borrowed two pens. That's all I did, just borrowed two pens and I stuck them on my nose. <laughs> she got super mad and I don't even know why. I, I gave them back to her. <laughs> And then another time, I didn't even do anything. It was it was snowing outside, and I went outside and I made two snowballs. That's all I did, just make two snowballs. And then I brought him inside and I put them in her boots. <laughs> See, it seemed like a good idea at the time, I don't know why. But by the end of the day, she was very angry with me, and I don't know why, I'm not really sure about that. She got super angry. And then this other time, I didn't do anything. All I did was I took the hamster out of his cage, very carefully, very gently took him out of his cage because I thought he might like to play in her purse. <laughs> and I don't know why she got so upset. You know, maybe she wasn't, maybe she wasn't an animal lover. I don't know what it was, but, but she was very angry with me. I remember one time she got so fed up with my behavior that she went to the back of the classroom and she found a desk that nobody was using and she brought the desk out into the hallway and she put the desk out of the hallway for me and that's where I used to have to sit pretty much every single day for an hour or two, sometimes even longer. And I started to feel a little bit alone, like I was kind of a misfit. I didn't fit in, I felt like there might be something wrong with me, I felt very, very lonely, very sad. and. It was not so good, but I thought things might get better for me when I got into the third grade because I had a brand new teacher. His name was Mr. Adi. And Mr. Adi told me the first day of school, he said, Dave, I'm not going to put you out in the hallway like your last teacher did. Instead, Mr. Adi found a way to make me feel isolated inside the classroom. <laughs> what he did was he put my desk right next to his, and then he moved everyone else's desk really far away. So I, I wouldn't be able to talk with anybody. I couldn't even borrow a pencil if I wanted to. And, and once again, I felt very alone and very isolated, and I felt like a total misfit. Would you like to know how I made things worse? Yes, <laughs> Okay. Well, oh, well, there I was uh, at Mr. Adi's desk, and I, I happened to notice that he had a nameplate that he had made for himself. Um, he had this professionally engraved nameplate on his desk, now, I don't know what Mr. Adi's first name was, but I do know that it started with the letter P. Oh, no. Maybe you, you can help me with this. Because, you know, oh, I don't know what this is. Maybe he uh, raised his name tag, but um, maybe you can help me. Let's say you took the word Adi and you put a P in front of it. What would you have? Adi. That's, that's exactly what I was thinking. And, uh, I thought it might be a very good idea to share this information with the rest of the class. And so I said, hey, look, everybody, our, our teacher's name is Mr. Potty. <laughs> of course, everyone thought that was very, very funny. Well, okay, not everybody. <laughs> Mr. Potty, I mean, Mr. Potty was not. <laughs> He took me by the hand and he changed his mind about putting me in the hallway. <laughs> went back out in the hallway and there I was again, once again, sitting in the hallway, feeling, feeling like a misfit, feeling all alone, feeling isolated, feeling very, very sad. And I think one of the bad things that happens when you're feeling bad about yourself is that you can ask, start asking some bad questions. And that's what I was doing. I was like, why me? Why, why do I have dyslexia? How come I can't read as well as everyone else? And what's wrong with me? How come I can't sit still? How come I can't stay in my chair? How come I can't do as I'm told? And the, the problem with asking bad questions is you can come
come up with some really bad answers. And that's what was happening to me. I was starting to feel like something was wrong with me. And so I would come home sometimes and I would be very, very sad. I'd come home from school and sometimes I would even be crying and I, and I would ask my mom, why, why can't I, why can't I do well in school? How come I can't read like everyone? Why do, I'm like, why am I only, the only one that has these problems? It was, it was so easy for me to be negative, but I was very, very lucky because my mom is the most <laughs> positive person I've ever met. And she said to me, you know, honey, maybe you're looking at all these things the wrong way. Maybe you're thinking of these things as, as, as problems. Well, maybe they're just challenges. And maybe if you use your imagination and you think about it, maybe you can come up with a better solution than being sad and being depressed. In fact, my mom taught me this really cool trick. Whenever you're feeling bad and you're starting to ask bad questions about yourself, there's only one question you really need to ask, and that is, how can I turn this into something good? And at first, I wasn't really sure how I could turn my situation into something good because I had a very mean teacher and I was a very discouraged little boy and I had another mean teacher. But the more I asked that really positive question, the more I started to use my imagination and things started to change. I started making little changes here and a little change there. And before, and before you know it, all those really negative experiences from my childhood turned into the Captain Underpants books. It, it started, they kind of turned into something something good. And something else really good came out of it too, because do you all know Petey from, from Dogman? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay, all right, good. So, so you remember how I said I felt like a misfit and I felt like I was a bad person when I was a kid? Well, those feelings were something that I, that helped me to inspire the kid inspire the character of Petey. And Petey, of course, in the very first few Dogman books, he feels like he's a bad guy, like he's a misfit, like he'll never, ever be able to do well. But, just like I was, Petey's very lucky because he has somebody in his life who believes in him. Somebody who thinks that it's very, very possible for all of us to change and all of us to become better versions of ourselves. And so, kind of, in a very real way, the relationship between Petey and his son, little Petey, is kind of based on the relationship that I have with my mom. My mom's positivity rubbed off on me and I was able to stay positive and have a good attitude and use my creativity to overcome some of my problems. Now, the next thing that we're gonna talk about that starts with the letter P is something I think you all know. Let's say that you wanted to be a professional basketball player. You wanted to be a pro, you wanted to go all the way. What would you have to do every single day? Right. What's that? Right. Practice. Practice. You have to practice all the time. Now, I want to show you something that I made when I was in second grade. This is one of the very, the very first comic books that I ever made called Dogman <laughs> in the Storm. And so Dogman is a character who's been with me for a long, long time. Um, but, and if you can see, if you can look at the pictures like closely, you can see that they're pretty good drawings for a second grader. They're not too bad. They're That's okay. Dumb. But I didn't want to be pretty good. I wanted to improve. I wanted to be really, I wanted to be the best I could possibly be. So I practiced all the time. In fact, practicing was so important to me that I wanted to showcase practicing in the Captain Underpants and the Dogman series. So if you read Captain Underpants book nine, you can see the story about how George and Harold met when they were in kindergarten and they made their very first comic. <laughs> in kindergarten when they first met. And if you look at the pictures, they look a little bit like stick figures. And the spelling is, is not too good, and the grammar is not very good either. But George and Harold didn't give up. They kept practicing, and they kept practicing. And the more they did, the more their drawings started to improve, and the more their grammar started to improve, and their spelling improved, and they started to add color. And by the time they got into fourth and fifth grade, their drawings really kind of, even their vocabulary was improving at this point and their ideas were getting better. So it's so important. I really wanted to show kids how important practicing was to me as a kid. Now, the third thing that I wanted to talk about that starts with the letter P is a kind of a hard word, but it's persistence. Raise your hand if you know what persistence is. Okay, good. In case you don't know, persistence basically means never giving up, even if things are kind of tough, even if, even if you're having a bad day, never ever giving up. And this was a huge, huge lesson that I learned about 30 years ago when I was making one of my very first books 
called Twice the Night Before Thanksgiving. When I made this book, I did what authors usually do when they make a book, they do a rough draft. And so I, I did all the drawings in black and white, and I typed out the story, and I glued it all together, and I made a little rough draft, and I put it into an envelope, and I mailed it to a publisher, because I wanted the book to get published. And I was so excited, because two weeks after I mailed this out, the publisher wrote back to me. And I was so excited. I opened up the letter, and I read it, and... <laughs> They didn't like it. They rejected it. I was really sad, but I thought, you know what? I am not going to give up. I took that story and I put it into a second envelope and I mailed it to a second publisher and I was so excited because two weeks later, they wrote back to me and they... So they didn't like it either. <laughs> but you know what they say, the third time is the charm. So I put that story back into an envelope and I mailed it to a third publisher. And guess what? Two weeks later, they wrote back to me too. And I was so <laughs> I didn't like it either. So I sent it to a fourth publisher. And a fifth publisher. And a sixth, a seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Twenty-three. Twenty-three different publishers did not like my story. Twenty-three publishers sent it back and said, no thank you, sir. We do not like this, we, were not, we don't want to publish it. And I didn't know what to do, but I thought, well, can't give up. I sent it to my 24th publisher, and when they wrote back to me, I didn't know what to expect. But, <laughs> <laughs> they liked it. And they said they wanted to publish it. It was gonna be a real book. And I got so excited that my head exploded. <laughs> Give up because if I had, my book never would have been published. And in fact, none of these books would have been published if I'd given up on that first try. In fact, there would never have been a Captain Underpants movie, and there wouldn't be a Captain Underpants TV show, and most importantly, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be able to meet all of you. And so I, it's really, to me, one of the most important things is to never ever give up, even if things get tough. And this is a lesson that I still learn sometimes today when I'm writing my books because. Sometimes I still get discouraged, even when I'm writing today. Like sometimes people don't like the things that I write. Even though if I try hard, I'll show them like something that I wrote, I'll, I'll do it again, I'll try it again, show them like, well, what do you think of this? <laughs> but you know, maybe third time, maybe they'll like this one. What do you think of this one? You know, no, they don't. And sometimes people don't like it, and sometimes people will even try to make you stop. They'll take their pen away from you, and they'll run away, and, but you can't give up. You always have to keep trying, you always, always have to give it your all. And that brings us to Dogman. Dogman is my newest series. It came out about three years ago, I think, and we have a new Dogman book coming out this summer called Dogman for Whom the Ball Rolls. And um, would you like to hear a little bit of it? Okay, I'll, I'll do my best. This is chapter one from Dogman for Whom the Ball Rolls. It's called Rise of the Planet of the Cats. <laughs> Petey! Petey! Petey, wake up! You're on TV! Come on, you gotta see it! <laughs> last, night's, last night's tragedy was narrowly averted thanks to the Super Buddies. But the biggest surprise of the night was the heroic bravery of Petey the Cat. Check him out as he saves this kid from a raging fire. Oh, I'm so proud of you, Petey. You're a hero. <laughs> Cut it out, Big Jim. Heroes don't snuggle. <laughs> Sorry, Petey. In related news, seven dog fugitives also saved the guy. The governor was so impressed she hardened them. Now, all seven dogs are free. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Gee, that is nice. <laughs> What's nice about it? Those dogs got set free, but I'm still locked up. Where's my pardon? Uh, yeah. Pete 
cheese, right? Why do dogs get special treatment? I'm hungry. <laughs> I say we unite. And together, we shall rise up and overthrow this dog-centric society. <laughs> We're with you, Petey. Viva la revolution! And so, my fellow felines, we must stick together. It's all for me and us for you! <laughs> but then... Hey, Petey, guess what? What? The governor just called. You've been pardoned. Seriously? Yep. You're a free cat. Awesome! Well, so long, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> but Petey, what about liberty? What about the revolution? What about sticking together to overthrow the status quo? Yeah, good luck with that. Mom. <laughs> And that is the end of chapter one. So, give you all a second. Thank you. <laughs> so, if you want to find out what happens, you have to wait until August. Until the book comes out. Um, and if you're a Dogman fan, you might be interested to know that there are actually two new Dogman books coming out this year. Uh, the first one is comes out in August, and the next one comes out, I think, on in December. Oh. December. Uh, I don't know which day. So what? December 10th, December 10th, okay. And that's called Dog Man Fetch 22. Now, before we get on to the next thing, I just wanted to end with one uh, picture I wanted to show you all. Um, this is my mom. <laughs> this is the person who always believed in me, even, even when I had a little trouble believing in myself. She, she not only believed in me, but she taught me about the three Ps, staying positive, practicing, and being persistent. And she taught me the most important question to ever ask yourself when things are going bad. How can I turn this into something good? All right. I hope you enjoyed Dave Pilkey's message. Remember, Remember the, the three P's. Positivity, practice, and persistence. And we want to take the best out of his message and turn it into something great. That's why we're kicking off our summer with a summer reading, reading challenge. All you need to do is comment down below what is your goal. My goal is to read five chapter books or more. My goal is to read four chapter books or more. And if you comment down below, you have a chance to win one of the Dog Man books by Dave oh, yeah. And we will also be doing book, some more book giveaways. And book reviews. Can't wait to see what you put down there and what your goal is. See ya, guys.